How's it going everyone? Let's take a good few minutes to talk about an artist that's been on the rise lately. An artist that's the latest to be signed to Reach Records, undoubtedly the largest label to be associated, past or present, with Christian hip-hop. This newest artist is easily the most different, though, with an ability to draw on a loyal fan base akin to the likes of Lecrae or NF. I'm talking about none other than AHA Gazelle. Cause we been getting money over here. Work hard, trying to get my stacks up. Everybody on my team racked up. As with the last artist spotlight, let me clarify a couple of things first. I'm not a musical expert, so this is the perspective of a longtime hip hop listener. Everything I say is completely my opinion, so if you disagree with something, make sure to leave a comment explaining why, or not. I mostly just want you to enjoy the video. Without further ado, let's see why AHA has this amazing ability to build up such a dedicated fan base in his own special way. I think the reasons are fairly simple, so this won't be a long video. Reason 1. He's a storyteller with a raw and honest beginning. Let me say this right off the bat. AHA Gazelle is a hard worker. I don't want to take away from how important that is, so I'm mentioning it before anything else. Now then, hard work is important, but there's plenty of hard workers making hip-hop. However, not many were willing, or were clever enough, should I say, to start off like AHA did. This is just fantastic. I am not joking. There's no special artwork. This man is simply standing here, looking a little tired. He's holding a bowl of food. I've seen plenty low-budget project covers, but I will never forget this one. If you look through the track list, he did his own production for five of the 13 tracks on that mixtape. He's worked his tail off, and he's trying to improve his health by eating better, not eating something extravagant. He's all done with the project, and he musters up the energy to take this simplistic photo for a cover. AHA is just trying to make a better life for himself. This cover is so transparent and relatable. Let me put it like this. The fact that you can look at this cover and, without listening to a single song, tell that this man started from absolute scratch is amazing. Not too many artists can tell the story by the cover of their project alone. Reason 2. AHA can create atmospheres through more than one medium. Well, yet another reason that has to do with storytelling, but this time from a totally different angle. In my opinion, the greatest storytellers can't be confined to one method. The amount of feelings and moods they want to convey are simply too complex for one method to capture it. To see what I'm getting at, let's examine the BMO and I series. Bimo and I 1 and 2 were interesting, and I believe they have a lot to do with the current Trillium story going on. Bimo and I 2 in particular birthed the classic, Saw Saul On Me. The most interesting song from it though has to be King David. Listen to this song, and hear the atmosphere more than the lyrics. I had a dream where I wrote everything, and they only loved me because I was a king. I had money and girls I for me and my team, so I saw on everything. If I was the king There's a lot going on in that beat. It's spacey but distinctly melancholy. AHA's lyrics are simple but he's adding on to the story with a somber pitch to his voice. The result is a track that sounds like a dream, yet even in his dream, there's the stinging reality that his supporters only love him because he's already at the top, so to speak. Sauce all on everything, he says, in the way that a king with an empty palace might say it. This track alone is its own story. Let's see if we can't find this talent anywhere else. Here we have, in my opinion, AHA's greatest and most complex project so far, Free Barabbas. Keep in mind that the story of Trillium isn't finished yet, so for now, Free Barabbas feels much more full than Trillium 1 and 2. However, I think some people may have missed the mixtape's presentation as a whole. Free Barabbas is the eeriest and most unsettling album I've ever heard from an artist associated with faith-based hip-hop. Listen to this sample that starts off the entire mixtape.
this haunting sample pops up four times throughout the mixtape. This mixtape is relentlessly ambient, always looking to provoke a feeling by sound alone. Listen to the start of this song called Best Thing in the World. AHA is capable of communicating emotions and feelings through sounds or something as simple as an edited sample. People are drawn to things that invoke powerful emotions and AHA's music is among the most emotional I've ever heard in the rap genre. AHA isn't just a rapper, he's an artist. Free Barabbas wasn't great because of the lyrical content. It was great because it was a vision, an experience shaped by soundscapes, the usage of multiple mediums to stir emotions and thoughts. Instead of projecting a movie onto a screen, it created one inside your very own head. My third and final reason, AHA lyrically wears his heart on his sleeve. For better or for worse, AHA seems to always speak his mind. From one perspective, you could say he has a big mouth. Personally, I think AHA is a lot more strategic and shrewd than many would like to give him credit for. AHA has a track called Daryl Coley FLP. It's a strange title, but don't think it's just some slapped together piece of music. This track moves carefully subject to subject, and at one point AHA addresses a topic that's something of a big arguing point. The idea of being a Christian rapper or a rapper who's Christian. Be like I know you knew the CHH, but you may be the best. And my only reply was what was that? I meant no disrespect. You can ask Keyshawn and Street, I never heard of it. I've only been making music, nothing more, nothing less. Basically, I knew who Lucre was and I respected his grind. He was the first rapper I recognized I was crossing the line. Up on BET showing that he wasn't ashamed of his faith. I felt like I had no excuse to go and be ashamed of mine. I found out by Annie, cause white people support their own skin. Rapping like a black guy, how could you not support him? My homie CJ put me up on social club and they were way too relatable. I've always felt like a Misfit. It's hard to find a question to ask after hearing that. The way he said it was undeniably ear grabbing. His energy and his direct approach to clarifying his situation seem almost reckless, but the honesty is hard to dislike. That's what I'm getting at. Aha isn't concerned with stepping on our toes, and whether he makes a fan or a hater out of you, you're likely to walk away from his songs thinking about what he said. He gets people thinking and talking because he's not afraid to blurt out his thoughts. I'm not implying that AHA's brash or actually reckless in the least though. He doesn't even present a front of being tough or an alpha male. In fact, AHA on many occasions gets very vulnerable to the point where it makes you as a listener feel vulnerable. Listen to this ending bit of Invitation, the last and the longest song off of Free Barabbas. I've been having a problem separating not high from William. Hiding from the problem not knowing that the burden is me. It's just that I had a version of me that I always wanted to be. He wears all black with joys and gold chains and gold teeth. When the cameras are all watching, he just takes over the beat. He always knows what to say and he's not afraid when he speaks. But when it all goes away, he just transforms back to me. Door closed, lights off, sitting on top of the rug. Hands dirty from everything that we done got out the mud. Most of it was never needed, but it was done just because He's in my head laughing like, ha ha ha, boy, they loving it, though And I laugh to myself as I look up above This is a song without a hook, but the whole time I was a drug I tried to shake God's hand and he gave me a hug Then he whispered in my ear, so I love He gives you an alarmingly deep glimpse into his very character And the darkness within him that he struggles with Maybe this thugged out aha is the man we see on the cover of Free Barabbas. He certainly changed from this aha. Either way, there's no getting past aha's ability to convey the fact that he is a broken man who needs Jesus as much as his listeners do. Listeners relate to this, and they relate to it powerfully. Even aha's more controversial statements get you thinking and relating in some way. In conclusion, guys, it's very easy to miss what aha is doing. For the people that get turned off by AHA's highly expressive musical persona, they miss out on the subtle ingenuity behind it all. AHA has carved out a special niche in this faith-heavy hip-hop world. From the very start, he's been garnering fans who like more than just his music. He's garnered fans that are drawn to AHA's insane amount of personality in his music. They're drawn to his stories, his overt statements, his intimate struggles with sin that he shares. They're drawn to his soundscapes, where he creates music that often sounds good, yet strange, like there's something foreboding, something deeper going on behind it all. This is the same reason why Aha Gazelle has some of the more vocal haters I've seen out there. The heart on his sleeve offends people, and Aha can't help it, it's just who he is. People love Aha's unapologetic rawness and the profound depth of intelligence sitting right next to it. 
He's a masterful storyteller and may very well be on his way to telling one of the biggest hip hop stories of all time. Well, that's it guys. If you like this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more hip hop content. Let me know if you'd like to see any artists spotlighted in the future. Until next time, peace out. If you need that sauce, you can in my line. I do not sleep, I don't get tired. Drop south, dance, now they mouth wide. Left, wrist or right, wrist I can't decide. Yeah, there's only room for the two. Yeah, two in the cool. Yeah.